Hari Bon, Hari Krishna, everyone. So we're back with the Shravanam Diaries podcast, and I'm your host Sulalita Devidasi. We're starting the new book today, and I told you yesterday that I'm very, very excited about this one, and it, it just it it's one of my favorite favorite books, and it's just a source of immense inspiration for me. I love it just from cover to cover, every single page, every single illustration. Drum roll. It's the light of Bhagavata. The book is called Light of the Bhagavata and let's just start with the preface. We offer our respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, who has delivered the light of the Bhagavata to the whole world. We are pleased to present for his pleasure this publication of his sublime work, Light of the Bhagavata. Of all his divine grace's writings, this work is perhaps the most unique it was written in Vrindavan in 1961, back then, in response to an invitation to attend the World Conference, the Congress for Cultivating the Human Spirit, held in Japan. As most of the participants to the conference were from the Orient, Srila Prabhupada considered deeply how he could best present the timeless teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam, suitable to the Oriental people. The original Bhagavatam was written over 5000 years ago as an extremely large book composed of 18,000 verses. Participants to the conference would not have the time to hear it all. He therefore chose one chapter from the original version for presentation. This is just... The chapter he selected was a description of the autumn season in Vrindavan, the place of Krishna's appearance. Srila Prabhupada knew that the oriental people were very fond of hearing descriptions of nature and that the time of the autumn season is particularly auspicious to them. Presenting spiritual philosophy by examples from nature would be best for their understanding. For each seasonal phenomenon, a parallel teaching could be given. For example, the dark cloudy evening of the rainy autumn season, when no stars are visible, is compared to the present materialistic, godless civilization, when the bright stars of the Bhagavata's wisdom, the devotees and scriptures are temporarily obscured. Altogether, Srila Prabhupada composed 48 commentaries to go along with the verses of the chapter. Srila Prabhupada's plan was that the organizers of the conference should find a qualified oriental artist to illustrate each verse and he wrote directions for, from which the artist could design such paintings, each painting. He hoped that the paintings and their accompanying explanations would make an impressive display for visitors to the conference. If possible, he wished that there might be published a book containing the illustrations and the texts. Due to unfortunate circumstances, Srila Prabhupada was unable to attend the conference and the whole project of Light of the Bhagavata was postponed. In fact, at the time of Srila Prabhupada's disappearance, the Light of the Bhagavata still remained unpublished and the illustrations not yet painted. The task of completing this great project was therefore left in the hands of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, the publishing house dedicated to keeping all of Srila Prabhupada's books in print. Particularly, 
the work was assigned to the Hong Kong branch of the Book Trust, since Srila Prabhupada had meant the book especially for the Oriental people. After much searching, it was our good fortune to secure the help of the renowned artist, Madame Li Yun Sheng, whose mature creative talent and sensitive brushwork alone could properly complement Srila Prabhupada's beautiful descriptions of the autumn season. Thus, the beautifully effulgent light of the Bhagavata may now shine upon the world. The book has been divided into two sections to accommodate the tastes of different readers. Those who prefer to gaze with poetic imagination will appreciate the first section, which contains the beautiful color reproductions of Madame Lee's work. 48 paintings completed in less than a year's time, meticulous in their detail despite her advanced age and sometimes failing eyesight. Undoubtedly, this collection presents the culmination of her long, distinguished career as one of the great artists of modern China. Her gong, gongbi? Her gongbi style of painting together with Srila Prabhupada's poetic descriptions, which appear alongside, make for a unique blending of the world's two oldest cultural traditions, India and China. Those readers who wish to go more deeply into the philosophy of the light of Bhagavata may turn to the black and white section of the book. There they will find the complete commentaries written by Srila Prabhupada along with small miniature reproductions of the paintings to help identify the painting being described. The publisher. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, I read this book in Russian <laughs> and the Russian Bhaktivedanta Book Trust wing, they combined the two. Like I have the book um, humbly, just say the backstory. I received my copy of the Light of Bhagavata, Light of the Bhagavata, in Russian, when I was like six years old. In the temple, they were giving out gifts for the children because we were singing very nicely in front of the deities. We were um, like a band from Moscow Gurukul who came to sing for Dayanitai Shachi Sutta, and then the devotees came and gifted all of us this book, Light of the Bhagavata, very beautiful books. And um, in, in, in that um, edition, the paintings and the verses are side by side, colorful. So this last paragraph, I read it for the first time that in English they had this kind of um, layout. So, uh, huh. we're going to stop here for today because I have some some noises around me <laughs> from all directions but tomorrow we are going to start and I don't know I remember I read it I can read it over like over one evening because I, I can just go into it and I just can't stop because it's incredibly beautiful and of course I would not uh, deprive you of the opportunity to take a look at all of these wonderful paintings so tomorrow we're going to start text one and tomorrow I will publish a link where you can read this book online or purchase it or uh, read it on Kindle. And I will take pictures of each of the painting and I will publish it along with the uh, book description on the website. And I will put the link, the link down for you in the, in the episode description tomorrow, as well as uh, I think I will, we will publish it on the um, social networks as well. Facebook and Instagram. Twitter doesn't take many images. Yes, Facebook and Instagram will also have some paintings and, uh, and the episode description as well. So, today it's like a meditational episode that um, it's a very beautiful book and it's an incredible, incredible... Mm, 
masterpiece of Srila Prabhupada and I just really wanted it to be like, let it be like Adivas. Adivas is a... Adivas, okay. So in Mayapur, especially in Mayapur, you can see that before some big event is to be held, a day before that, on the eve, there is Adivas, where you just set your mind and you just, you know, like, prepare for the celebration on the eve. So today uh, we are, we have read the preface and we are setting our mood to dive into this beautiful book and we shall do this tomorrow. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is going to come up tomorrow and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.